October of 1992 saw the initial release of Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six, developed by Bit Studios and published by Acclaim Entertainment under the LJN banner, Return of the Sinister Six can be an immensely frustrating experience at times, but I believe it's yet another example of a retro game that gets too much hate, one of the more impressive attempts at superheroes from the third generation. For one thing, its graphics and animations aren't half bad given the era it came out in. I've seen a lot worse. Biggest issue you'll notice right away when you play this game is that its controls feel extremely sticky. You move Spider-Man with the directional pad. Jump is B. To jump higher, you hold B. To jump forward with a somersault, which looks silly like he's an actual gymnast, you have to be moving first before you press B, or else your jump is locked in place. You can't jump from stationary and then redirect yourself in mid-air. You have to wait for the entire animation to end before attempting to jump again. It's annoying and goes against a lot of your gaming sensibilities. I have reason to believe that Spider-Man's attacks in this game were programmed by a supervillain. Pressing A performs a punch, holding A keeps his arm extended, though I don't know what purpose it serves. It doesn't appear to do any additional damage. If you double tap A or press A along with up on the D-pad, Spidey will do a flying kick. And if you happen to have picked up any web cartridges, a ranged web attack can also trigger. I don't think I have to explain why all of this is a problem. While you're moving around with the D-pad and pressing the A button almost constantly, you're guaranteed to do attacks you didn't mean to do, pressing and double tapping inputs by mistake. The hit detection is bad enough in this game, but it's made even worse when you can't predict what attack animation Spider-Man is going to do next. Most times, you'll fly right past or through your enemies. I do get a chuckle when the criminals explode into tiny pieces on contact though. Kinda morbid. As expected, you can climb up and shimmy across certain scalable walls by holding the D-pad near them. You can also web swing. After performing a high jump, tapping A will release a web line. However, it doesn't always seem to work. It's like the web has a mind of its own, and trying to aim it at a specific point on screen is damn near impossible. While hanging from a web, you can rock the D-pad back and forth to increase the range and speed of your swing, but the game rarely gives you the opportunity to do this. Same goes with chaining multiple web swings together. Spider-Man's health is represented by four blocks of energy. Each block allows you to get hit numerous times. If you defeat enough enemies, earning 1,000 points, an energy block will be replenished. There are a few pickups to look out for in this game. Web fluid is in the form of flashing charges. Each one gives you 10 shots and carries over between stages. Some of the levels require you to locate specific items to progress, like a key to get past a door in the power plant, TNT and a detonator that you have to place down in the sewers to blow up an obstruction, and in the mansion level, you need to find the infrared goggles to see in the dark, or else one of the sections become futile. You'll be running and jumping around like a dipshit trying to find the exit. I was stuck for like 10 minutes. Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six is loosely based on the story arc of the same name published in 1990. Among the pages of The Amazing Spider-Man number 334 to 339, which I reviewed on the channel earlier this week if you'd like to check that video out for more context. The story of the game is pretty vague. It has Dr. Octopus wanting to take over the world and it's up to you to stop him. He's reassembled his team of some of Spider-Man's deadliest enemies, and each of the levels have you face off with one of them at the end. 
The game's manual says each of the levels take place within the villain's own hideouts, their domain, where they'll have a clear advantage against the Web Slinger, a tactic they put to use back in their debut storyline in the 1960s, another of the game's heavier influences. Level 1 is the Power Station. I like the surges of electricity that come down from the power lines on your approach to the station. Electro is the first boss, but easy the most frustrating in my opinion. Once you turn off the switch to the plant's power and he comes at you, he tends to just float around out of reach, even off the playable screen. You have to do some fancy maneuvering to lure him out. You wish the game would let you attack while jumping. It won't stop you from trying though, believe me. I always thought level 2 was the sewers, but the manual says it's a toxic waste dump beneath the city, okay? There's acid dripping from pipes, rats squeaking and jumping around, and hanging chains you have to climb up. Sandman isn't that tricky. There are ways to cheese this fight and get him stuck in some of the corners. If you move too far away from him, he will throw sand fists at you before phasing into the ground. Level 3 is set in Mysterio's House of Illusions. There are butterflies that transform themselves into missiles, feathers that turn into falling bombs, and some of the enemies look like zombies and other ghouls. There are several elevators in this stage you will need to find to progress, one of which leading you into a trap, that dark room I mentioned earlier if you haven't found the infrared goggles before entering. The boss fight with Mysterio has him teleporting all over the place, and you have to beat him four times. The first three are holograms. The following two levels in this game feel extremely rushed in my opinion. The pacing in them feels off compared to the rest. Level 4 has you back on the streets of New York, dodging Vulture, who is dropping bombs on you as his hired goons shoot bazookas. You just have to run like the Dickens and avoid as much damage as you possibly can. You then reach a rooftop that Vulture has made into his nest, I guess. He's also one of the easier bosses, flying back and forth across the screen and occasionally landing for a few seconds. Level 5 is another quick one. It takes place in the forest. The enemies in this stage can be challenging. Razor bats flying around, trolls, yes trolls, throwing their clubs, and Hobgoblin even pops up here and there to shoot lasers at you from his glider. Same as before, run and jump like hell to make it to the end. Once you reach Hobgoblin's lair in the cave, he's kind of a pushover. He throws pumpkin bombs at you, but unlike Electro, he tends to hover right in front of you like a dumbass and patiently waits for helpings of your knuckle sandwiches. Finally, level 6 is Doc Ock's castle. There was never a castle in the Return of the Sinister Six storyline, but there was one in the Amazing Spider-Man Annual from 1964, where Ock had been holding Aunt May and Betty Brant hostage. Dr. Octopus is also sporting his retro green jumpsuit he wore during that period, and not the white tuxedo he had in the early 90s. I don't find Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six to be that difficult compared to some other superhero games of the era, but reaching the eight-limbed evildoer can be tough without a cheat device because of the wonky hit detection and controls. You have to beat Ark three times in three separate rooms of his castle. Each one gets progressively harder as you have less space to maneuver around his mechanical arms. It's funny, when you beat him, you knock his guard off. The game ends with Spider-Man victorious and the entirety of the Sinister Six behind bars. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Return of the Sinister Six isn't shown enough respect in my opinion. I think it was one of the better superhero games from that console generation. It's got problems with it from a gameplay perspective, Spider-Man controls like ass, but I think its visuals have some charm, and as an adaptation of its title story arc, at the time it wasn't terrible. If I owned this game as a kid, I'd have had a lot of fun with it. With it. 
Thank you for watching my quick little review of Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six on the original Nintendo. Let me know what you thought of the game and the video down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support the channel, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and become a producer over on Patreon if you can. I will see you all in the next one. Take care and stay nerdy.